Greetings, this is Charles Darwin. I bet you didn't know I was that strong. I could pick up a boulder and hold it over my head. Talk about evolutionary fitness. I apparently have it. Well, actually, this is not a stone made out of minerals. This is diatomite, which is the compressed bodies of diatoms. Therefore, it consists mostly of silicon dioxide, the same thing as glass. Five million years ago, this was a shallow ocean, very tranquil waters, lots of sunlight, warm water, lots of nutrients, and it was filled with diatoms floating in the water. And as they died, they accumulated at the bottom of the shallow sea. Later, they were compressed into diatomaceous earth, of which these hills almost entirely consist. Now, diatoms float because of oil that is inside their shells, and uh, this was compressed into petroleum, which is still extracted from these hills. So both the diatomite and the petroleum show that there had to be a slow accumulation over a period of one or two million years of diatoms. Now the importance of this place is as follows. I started reading a short story by one of your writers, Ernest Hemingway. It was called Hills Like White Elephants. I was hoping to learn something about the hills, you know, and instead it was just a man and a woman at a bar. I kept expecting something to happen. Anyway, but if you can come and look at the hills like white elephants outside of Lompoc, California, you can learn something about the history of the earth. You see, creationists claim that all of the geologic deposits were produced by a massive flood. If that was the case, then not only would you have all of the different species mixed together, you would also have the different geological substrates mixed together. Now, the creationists can claim that during the flood, uh, all of the species were mixed together, but God scooched the dinosaurs over there and he scooched the large mammals over there so that it looked like they didn't live at the same time. But did God also scooch all of the individual diatoms from the ocean and put them all in this one location? You see, it's not just the species, but also the geologic substrates that show a pattern that can only be explained through the long passage of time. Before I was a biologist, I was a geologist, and that was one of the main insights that I got from Charles Lyell, who got it from James Hutton, was that the history of the Earth involves long passages of time. I hope you get a chance to see this someday. This is Charles Darwin. Tally-ho, and amen.